Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with the juice to get you through the long night. Vikings. Let's talk about Vikings. You know, I did a video like when the Vikings season ended last season and people were snapping. It got claimed and taken down because I think I was on to some juice. I was on to like a probably a major spoiler. But anyway, if you have not watched Vikings and you like Game of Thrones, then you need to find your nearest TV or streaming device and binge watch Vikings because the new season is coming out. I'm not sponsored. I would like to be Vikings History Channel, what's up? But for all my faithful Viking watchers, let's talk. So when Vikings ended for mid-season, I did a video on the possible plot point of Rolo and Bjorn Ironside and the you know what I think about Rolo thinking he's Bjorn's dad. Like Rolo doesn't want Bjorn hurt because Rolo thinks Bjorn is his son. And there's some foreshadowing for this way back when Rolo had a conversation with Lagatha. I can't play any of the footage, so, you know, just take my word for it. It was foreshadowed that Rolo is going to try to think he's Bjorn's son and Bjorn's going to kill him. But anyway, some of the comments under the video... It kind of led me to believe that some people think that Vikings the TV show is a documentary and not a historical drama or it's not historical fiction. So I figured I would do this video and this video is real history versus Vikings the TV show and what I think is going to happen. So the trailer for this season was insane. There's going to be a war for Kattegat and of course a war between brothers and King Alfred is on the throne getting Vikings to side with him. Trouble could actually come from that because well Alfred is Athelstan's bastard and well yeah trouble could come from that. But let's focus on not the dramatizations but the actual history and major plot points of the real sagas and what history has to say about vikings and what history has to say about where people are going to end up on this tv show if history has anything to do with it i mean it is the history channel but anyway let's start with the man of all men ragnar lothbrook because basically the sagas are about ragnar and his sons so in season one in the show, Ragnar is just a farmer married to Lagertha with a son Bjorn and a daughter named Gita and a brother named Rolo. He later marries Oslog and has Uba, Vitzerk, Sigurd Snake in the Eye, and Ivar the Boneless. But what does history say? Well, according to history, Ragnar Lothbrok was not a Norseman. He was actually Swedish and he was not a poor farmer. He was the son of a Swedish king. Even though the poor farmer thing, you know, it pulls at your heartstrings. It's good TV. Anyway, Ragnar had three wives, if not more. One wife is never mentioned on the show and she comes before Oslog and she gives Ragnar two sons. Her name is Thora Townhart. Thora was the daughter of a king or an earl. I don't, not gonna even try to pronounce his name. I'll put it on the screen. Anyway, Thora's father gave her a worm and it grew so big that he promised her hand to the man that slayed the serpent. Of course, Ragnar slayed the beast and took Thora as wife. Ragnar was madly in love with Thora and Thora gave him two sons, this one and this one. Thora later died from an illness and later Ragnar would marry Oslog. Oslog would give him five sons, Bjorn Ironside, Ivar the Boneless, Vitserk, Uba, and Sigurd Snake in the Eye. In the tales of Ragnar's son, there is no mention of Lagertha or any children by Lagertha. According to Saxo Grammaticus, a Danish historian that wrote the Justa Denorum, basically Ragnar heard about Lagertha's skill as a shield maiden and was impressed and he wanted her. And that's where the bear and the hound story comes into play, that he slayed the bear, strangled the hound to win her love. He allegedly had a son with her named Fredder and two daughters. He divorced her to marry Thora, but the thing is, Lagather's history is so muddied that we don't even know if she's a real person or multiple people or a mix between multiple people, one person, and a Norse mythology goddess. We just don't know. But we know for sure Ragnar had one wife and two sons that the History Channel completely cut out. We don't know if Gita existed or not. But Lagather certainly was not Bjorn's mother. Oslog was. Ivar the Boneless is not the youngest child of Ragnar. 
One of Ragnar's most famous acts was his siege of Paris, but it went down a lot different than on the show. It is said that on Easter of the year of 845, Ragnar and 5,000 Vikings sacked Paris. The Vikings only left Paris for a price, 7,000 pounds in silver. The whole dead Ragnar popping out of the casket was not how it went down. However, Bjorn Ironside took a town called Luni in Italy that way. It was Bjorn who played dead and popped up and took the city. Rollo had no relation to Ragnar. At least there's no mention of it in the sagas or any other historical text that I have read. Ragnar sacked Paris in 845. Rollo was born in 846. So Rollo wasn't even born when Ragnar sacked Paris. Rollo was a leader of Viking settlers and he actually became the Duke of Normandy in 911 or 918, long after Ragnar was dead. However, Rollo is a very interesting character from history. His son would succeed him, his successor and his followers were called the Normans and they would head the Norman invasion of England and they would rule Norman England. They would also capture Sicily and rule it as kings of Sicily. Floki was not Ragnar's friend. Floki in Vikings is based off of this person right here. I'm not even going to try to say his name. I, I just, I'm not, I know I'm not going to get it right. So the History Channel actually did a write up on him. And Helga didn't exist, but he did have a wife and two children. Both his children died from a drowning. The real Floki was known as Raven Floki because he took three ravens with him to help him find Iceland. The first raven flew for a while before returning, so he knew it had not found land. The second one flew above the boat before landing again. The third raven flew away and never returned. So that was the raven that he followed, knowing that it had found land. When he found it, he hiked to the very top of the mountain where all he could see was ice as it was winter. Therefore, he named it Iceland. Floki died in Iceland, just as Floki on the show probably will. History Channel also said this about the character adaptation of Floki. Yet again, we're faced with the facts. The real historical figure bears only a small resemblance to his character in Vikings. The historical timeline has been expertly adapted and rewritten by the creators of Vikings to make an impressively dynamic and captivating show. Always keep that in mind when we're talking about Vikings. So the great heathen army was a real thing. But according to the saga, the thing is, it didn't go down quite the same. Ivar actually made a pact with King Ayla. He asked Ayla for land, only enough that an ox hide could cover. But Ivar got all clever and stretched the hide three times and cut it up into tiny pieces and secured enough land for a town. But he plays Ayla. After a while, he calls to his brothers to send him all the gold they can. They do, and he buys Ayla's soldiers, and the great heathen army attacks. The saga says that Ayla was blood-eagled, but the Saxons' accounts say Ayla died in battle. Some scholars think that Ivar the Boneless is identical to Imar, who founded a dynasty and dominated Ireland and Scotland for several centuries. Him and his brother, I don't know which brother, it's all confusing, would be named Kings of Dublin. And when Ivar died in 873, he would be called the King of the Norsemen of all Ireland and Britain. In the sagas, King Ayla did kill Ragnar in the snake pit, but he didn't want to kill Ragnar because he knew his sons would avenge their father. Either way, he did die in the snake pit. And the line in the show, how the little piggies will grunt when they hear how the old boar suffered, is a verse straight from the sagas. Also, the way Ragnar asked Oslog to come to him, not dressed, but not naked, not alone, but whatever, the fishnet thing, that is straight from the saga as well. Oslog predicting Ivar would be born fucked up was also in the sagas. Oslog predicting Sigurd would have a snake in his eye was also from the sagas. Vitserk in history raids what is now Russia. He winds up getting outman and taken captive. And when they ask him how he wants to die, he tells them to build a funeral pyre on the heads of his dead men and burn him alive. Ube dies in battle in England in Devonshire and they bury him there. 
Bjorn lives to be old and rich. He, he raids the Mediterranean, South Africa, Italy, Portugal, Spain. Bjorn is well traveled, but he lives to be a king, old and rich. Bjorn is said to be buried on the island of Monso in Lake Malaren, Sweden. I think Bjorn is going to outlive everyone in the story. Athelstan is not based on a real person from history. The timeline is muffled. We have like 100 year time jumps and shit. But the point is that it, it's not a documentary. It's a historical fiction. And that's if you count the sagas as canon. The History Channel's writers, the writers for Vikings, seem to be like if a person in the sagas lived in the sagas, then they let them live. But if they died in the sagas, then they have to die. Like, they killed off Ragnar because he died. He died in the sagas, so he had to die on the show. Which is why I think since Vitserk died in the sagas, he's gonna die on the show. Since Uba died in the sagas, he's gonna die in the show. Vitserk gets taken as captive and they burn him alive, which in the trailer we do see what looks like someone being burned at the stake, which I think is gonna be Ivar burning Vitserk alive. Uba dies in battle in England. We see the Vikings going to England to assist Athelstan's son, King Alfred. So Uba might die there. But Bjorn is going to live and he's going to live a very rich life. And Ivar is probably going to be run off by the Vikings and settle in Ireland and Scotland. If you want to know more about Vikings history in general, I want to recommend the Viking Lectures by The Great Courses. They are jam-packed with knowledge. If you want a more canon telling of Ragnar's sagas and his son's sagas and some other stuff specifically about the show Vikings, a book I can recommend is The Legend of Ragnar Lothbrook by Christopher Van Dyke. But what do you think about the history of Vikings and what do you think it could mean for the next 10 episodes? As always, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the sweet summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.